Welcome everybody to episode 40 of the Cover 2 presented by Tiger Vision. We've made it all the way to the big 4-0. Um, this is Grayson Mann. Across from me as always, I'm Patrick Neal. Now you may be wondering why we are so far apart. Maybe. Um, maybe just maybe. The ghost of Daniel Jones being a top 10 QB is back. Um, yeah. I, da, 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 da. What's up, y'all? I'm Kieran Devine, and I'm back on the show, friend of the pod. And yeah, excited to talk about some NFL. Let's go. Um, it, it, that was like a WWE like entrance. We're like, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, that was a, that was a big reveal. That was pretty. That was pretty but, solid. Anyways, like Kieran said, we're gonna be talking NFL as always. Um, we got to start potentially the game of the year. I think I, a lot of people are saying it's gonna be it's gonna be really tough to top this. Uh, the Vikings. Beat the Bills 33 to 30 in overtime. Um, just a nuts game. Uh, so what what happens here? There is a lot that happens. Um, this may have been the most Kirk Cousins game of all time potentially. Oh yeah, because you go down 17 and you're, you the Bills are up 27 to 10 at home. The crowd is going nuts and Kirk Cousins has thrown two interceptions where you're just like, oh no, the new nightmare no more. And then slowly but surely. Some mistakes happen here, some mistakes happen there. Oh, the Vikings are back in it with the drive. And then Justin Jefferson makes the most incredible catch that I've ever seen. Absolutely nuts. But yeah, so basically what happens, the, it's the fourth quarter, the Vikings are down. It's fourth and 18, I believe, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's fourth and 18. Kirk Cousins throws it to Justin Jefferson. Jefferson makes, people are saying a better catch than Odell. It was Jr. not, not even uh, close. Look, uh, look, that's a hot it's take. up there. Uh, you got to include situation in it too. I mean, like, that's, that's fourth like, and eighteen. They're not winning this game if he doesn't catch it. But the actual catch, though. But the actual catch was really impressive. But anyways, uh, they get the com they get the completion. They get the fourth down conversion. Bring it all the way to the goal line. Kirk Cousins cannot sneak it in. <laughs> it's um, very on, on brand for on, him. Yeah, <laughs> on fourth on fourth and goal. So ball turns over to the Bills. Everybody's thinking the game is over. But it's not. Wrong. The Bills fumble the snap. Josh Allen fumbles the snap. The Vikings recover, get a touchdown. So now the Vi the Bills have to go down the field 70 yards in about 40 seconds. Kick they a field do goal. It. They kick a field goal. It goes to overtime, including a Gabe Davis questionable catch. Uh, then it goes to OT. The Vikings get a field goal, and then Patrick Peterson gets a second interception of the game and seals the game for the Vikings. And it was just nuts. You see the um, Josh Allen meme where it's like the, the Bills have lost the coin toss and it's just this like PTSD flashback and he's like, oh no, not again. But he, he got an opportunity. He did. He got his chance. He did. He, he got his chance. Convert. Can't sleep on, I was going to say, you can't sleep on Captain Kirk here though. Can't. Kind of playing himself in that elite quarterback category. Oh, um, Sneaky, no. sneaky good. No, probably not. <laughs> but, top 10. Okay, well. Mm, we'll get to that. We'll uh, get there. This is a big discussion for yeah. another time. I, I don't know. Dude. I think you can't take Kirk, away Kirk. from what the Vikings did this game. They, uh, they were able to kind of rally, which is a really hostile environment. And I think people, the natural, what I was watching on Monday, I think people are making it more about the Bills' mistakes, which is a big part of why the Vikings were able to prevail. I think the Vikings showed, hey, this isn't a team that we've won seven, seven, seven games or seven to one here, and it's kind of like this road, this fluke meme that things keep people keep throwing around it's a Vikings team that's very very legit I mean for any team to have seven wins right now like they got to be a good team so yep <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean it's you're, you're correct there so it is indeed they, correct they only have one loss so um so they, the Eagles. I feel like they low-key just have this division almost wrapped up already I yeah. mean maybe the Packers come back they had a big win against the Cowboys but they're playing well I I think a lot of people were kind of I think a lot of people have the same kind of thought with the Vikings that they're playing well, but this isn't going to translate to the postseason, and nobody really knows what to think of them. But this is a good win, and you know the Bills have kind of between this week and last week kind of had some shakiness. Josh Allen's I think a little bit injured; uh, he's making some bad mistakes. But you know, despite Kirk Cousins throwing an I don't know what interception, you know, and also <laughs> falling down a few times in the backfield. That, that was goofy. They're playing, they're playing well. Yeah, Kirk Cousins is just the definition of goofy. Yeah. I don't think anyone – th the Vikings could go 16-1 and one from here on out, and I don't think anyone would trust them to win past the first round, even it, though they have a bye at that point. It's kind of like, no, no, it's kinda like the Titans last year, I feel like. A yeah. lot of people kind of thought the similar thing with Titans, that they're a great team, but when it comes down to it, do you want Ryan Tannehill – 
trying to lead you on on a game winning. Kirk drive. Cousins is significantly better than Tannehill, though. Yeah, I would have to agree there. I'd, uh, yeah, I'd, I I mean Kirk Cousins is a good quarterback, but I I I think the stats are kind of showing that he's he's not playing as well as he did last year. I think his EPA per play is down mm. um, near near kind of the middle of the pack. I mean he kind of always has been, but I think it's a little bit down this year compared to normal. I but would say also like this year, I feel like especially when we get to the playoffs, but I feel like any team can really beat any team. And we're going to kind of get into this with our next game too. But there's just no, maybe besides the Chiefs, who are probably the favorites to win all at this point, but the NFL is very balanced. Like, Isn't that just great? Yeah. It makes it's me feel good for the sport. It's, yeah, yeah it's yeah. Good, good to hear. But uh, any last thoughts about the Vikings-Bills? I think, I think the, um, the, the Vikings, when they're playing the Cowboys, is going to be a game to say, hey, can you, you going to stay, stay at this? They've really gone, like, this peak – Right now, it feels good to be a Vikings fan. This test against the Cowboys, hey, are they going to come down to earth or are they going to keep riding this high that they're currently on? Yeah, is and you know maybe Kevin O'Connell coach of the year potentially. Yeah, it's it, it's, it's between uh, Dayball and O'Connell at this point. Yeah, yeah, maybe even maybe even a little <laughs> Pete Carroll sprinkle in there. Yeah, a little Pete Carroll sprinkle in there. Or or Robert Sala as well. New York, at New York, and uh, we'll see how that Patriots game goes. But like Kieran said, our next game, Commanders beat the Eagles the last night, Monday night. Somehow, um, <laughs> they win 32 to 21. NFC beast. The N NFC beast. NFC it beast. Is, it is a beast for sure. Um, They've gone yeah. from least to beast in the span of two years. Yeah. So, so good, good, good for the. Let's NFC go. East. Good job. Good Best job. division in football right now. Good job. Love to see it. <laughs> uh, if, if you had said that at the beginning of the season, I think a lot of people probably. I think there's a lot of things that Kieran said at the beginning of the season <laughs> that we would have said. But, <laughs> um, the refs were very active in this game. Oh boy! Uh, a pretty clear miss. Dallas Goddard face mask when he f in turn fumbled the ball did not get called. Um, but probably the, I don't know. This was <laughs> it was the right call. But Heineke kneeling at the end of the game. Yeah. He he kneels to take the sack, and then Brandon Graham decides to to tackle him anyways, <laughs> right in front of the referee. <laughs> referee was super excited to throw that flag. He threw that thing super far in the air. Uh, I, I, I saw some people arguing that that was not, that was a it, clear. It, it was a clear, yeah. like, it was definitely the right call. I, I don't think there's any question about that. But the fact that Heineke was somehow able to get a first down by doing that. Oh, his celebration afterwards was hilarious. <laughs> he, was, he was like, He was yeah. very excited. Um, and then after the games, you know, he's, he's pulling the Kirk Cousins card. <laughs> The entire defense of, of the commanders, uh, they're sitting in coach, by the way, like, like <laughs> okay. not even like first class on the plane ride home, but you, know, the chain. you give him all the chains, you give him the glasses, he's got, he's like double fisting bush light, uh, which is like, I, I mean, hey. it, it works for a lot of people on, on college campuses, <laughs> but when you're an NFL quarterback, I, I feel like you, you might be able to get a little bit better taste, but you know, maybe bush. Bush Light's his go-to. Maybe. I mean, he got a new deal uh, in the off-season, or the two off-seasons ago. Maybe he can afford maybe a wine, something yeah. really nice. Look, I don't know. <laughs> although, honestly, Taylor Heineke passes pass the vibes of, like, just, oh, yeah. just knocking back Bush Light's constantly. Like, that honestly could be his drink of choice, I, I feel like. Now, if he would have gotten an excessive celebration on that play, would that have caused it to – would that have, like – Taken away the first down there. I don't know, but do they cancel out? That's I, a good point. I I don't think it was that excessive of an acceleration. See, I was I mean, kind of maybe, for it. Maybe like maybe for chaos. that. Maybe for what happened, it was a little bit much. But look, they won yeah, they won the game off of it. So you know, you got to give them a little. Yeah. Did he did he hit the? I think he the, like. I thought it was like a double just, point. I think he just went hands up in the air. But I, I think there was a little point in there. We'd oh, have okay. to we'll have to see the booth review on that after. Yeah, but. but <laughs> what's what's the next quarterback we want to see? You know, shirt off, chains dangling on on the plane ride home. I know his answer. <laughs> <laughs> I think Matt Ryan should have done it after oh my gosh. after the Colts game. That, that would have been, been something. That would have been too funny. Ironically, we'll talk about Jeff Saturday. So his his best coaching decision might have been like, you know, that Matt Ryan guy, not too bad. Yeah, <laughs> I want to start him. <laughs> um, the Eagles, though, they are no longer undefeated. Um, Philadelphia frauds. Oh well, oh. <laughs> I don't know about that one, but it's like you said. Anyone who gets eight or seven wins, they have to be good. Yeah, yeah. They, Fair. They got more than seven wins. And they got eight, eight, so, seven, seven. They're a good team. They might win the division. I mean, that's such a close division, kind of a toss up right now. But still, probably a top five team with what we're looking at right now. But it's a tough loss. Washington, you can't really sleep on them. They beat Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. Now they're going and being the Eagles. 
they're not as bad as people think they are. Do you remember uh, in 2020 when a certain undefeated Steelers team lost to Washington? They just got something in them. They're like, hey, if you're undefeated, we're coming I for th you. I think the Eagles team is a bit better than that. Steelers no, yeah, and I'm not making a comparison to the two teams. Like, I'm not saying that the Eagles are ready to get destroyed yeah. by Baker Mayfield in the playoffs, yeah. but uh, no. But <laughs> it's Ron, just Washington. Yeah, Ron Rivera was able to get this win. I think his mother passed away about 10 days ago, which is oh. kind of hard to hear, but um, he was a little emotional in, in the locker room afterwards. Um, but, you know, good for him. Um, Heck of the, coach. E the Eagles, though, as they're saying, uh, they had a lot of turnovers in this game. Uh, you know, Quez Watkins had a big catch and then proceeded to fumble it right afterwards. So um, I think them missing Jordan Davis is, is big. Um, it, he helps a lot in the run game. And, like, the, the commanders had over double the Eagles' time of possession in this game. There, there was a point where it was like 30 minutes to seven. It was, yeah. it was complete domination on yeah, that point. Yeah, so you, you can kind of tell the, the impact of Jordan Davis there. Um, and I don't know if he's out for the season. I don't remember. But uh, hopefully he's not, and they can get him back soon. Yeah, because in a division, when that division play starts to heat up, you're going to face Tony Pollard and Zeke. You're going to face yeah. Saquon Barkley. And then yep. I don't know if the Eagles and Commanders have already played. I'm pretty sure they have. So that, that was I their think second got, time. I think, I think they're playing again. But let's say the Commanders find their way in the seventh seed and the Eagles are like the second seed. That's another matchup. So you yeah. need Jordan Davis to plug up those holes. Yeah. But quickly, uh, I don't know if y'all caught this stat on the broadcast, but they put like Devon. This is the most random stat. I don't know how you find this. ESPN stat right here. <laughs> Devonte <laughs> Smith is the first player to score a receiving touchdown on his birthday two years in a row. Like, good I for mean, him. I mean, good for him. Good but for him. How do you find that stat? So what? What day of the week was his birthday last year? Was it Monday? And it would have been a Sunday probably. So he had two birthdays. Oh, because he was Monday night this year. That's right. Yeah, makes sense. But yeah. just like such random stat that. You know. Gotta love the ESPN production crew going to work. <laughs> they they were they were digging hard for that one, I bet. But yeah. So let's, any, should we head across the pond? Yeah, across the pond over to Germany. The Bucks. The first ever game in Germany. Great vibes there. Though that German crowd is pretty legit. That yeah. was really fun. I want them to go back like a, consistently because it's fun to watch. I think they will. But it was great to see all the different fans in like different jerseys. Like nobody had the same team on, but they yeah. were all. They were all out there singing uh, country roads. A lot of bandwagons. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah I guess so. But, um, yeah, it was, it was great to see. Uh, country roads, by the way, it's about Western Virginia, not West Virginia. Did you know that? Uh, really? Mm -hmm. That's interesting. We might yeah. have to get fact check on that. Yeah. Uh, I, I heard it somewhere once, okay. so I'm, I'm choosing to believe that. Heard but down the grapevine. Yeah. But anyways, um, Germany, great vibes. I agree with Grayson. They should go back at some point. Uh, but the Bucks' defense played well. Dang. Um, they it, they got Antoine Winfield back, so he was he was he was a big um, yeah, big part of that side. defense. And Rashad White might be the 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 back now. Yeah. Potentially. The the thing that caught me about this game is the the Julio Jones had a really nice game. Was finally starting to get involved within the production. That could be a receiver that comes up late as that third option. I'm not saying, I'm not making a lot of comparisons here, just in terms of like, if Julio Jones could be that, like a solid number three option for Brady, the way Odell was a solid option for Matthew Stafford, just kind of giving the defense something to think about. I mean, they're, they've won two straight. Brady's focused, I think, again. And we'll just kind of see, even though he kind of slipped there on that, uh, that throw. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, don't put Brady at receiver. It never turns out well. We had that, that Leonard Fournette interception. I'm not going to lie. I think Tom Brady was open on that. He, he was. He's, he's like, he should, it was a bad he, throw, and, and he slipped. He but missed, I think if he leads that pass, like you, he missed Julian you know, it wasn't going to go high point it though, because uh, Tom Brady's probably got about a five inch vertical on him. You know, Tom Brady's calling up Julian Edelman, being like, "Man, if only you could throw yeah. me that ball." Um, but the, I don't know. The Seahawks are still a good team. I think I think the Bucks just kind of showed up for once. They're just more talented than the Seahawks yeah. at this current point. So once when the Bucks figure it out, it's like, hey, they, there's a good team hiding there somewhere. Yeah. Um, and hey, Gino, maybe getting a contract extension? He he might be supposedly at the end of the season. That is the talk. But potential um, comeback player of the year right there. He, Got to oh, be yeah, between yeah. him and Saquon now, right? Yeah, or Derrick Henry as well, potentially, um, if if you qualify. Derrick Henry as being You know who just it. needs to come back is James Winston. Just completely yeah. unrelated. Just he needs to just come back. Yeah, I, will, I, I think we'll talk about that in a little bit. But um, 
The Colts. We were talking about Saturday. Saturdays are Saturdays on Sundays. Let's go. Let's clap yeah. it up for Jeff Saturday. Um, first win. Can, I, first first win. can I make a real quick comment about sure. Jeff Saturday? You are, it. you are fully welcome to. I'm gonna look into the camera. Oh, he's doing it. If there are a hundred Jeff Saturday fans in the world, <laughs> I'm one of them. If there are fifty Jeff Saturday fans in the world, I'm one. If there are ten Jeff Saturday fans, I'm one. If there is one Jeff Jeff Saturday fan in the entire world, one. It's me. And if there are no Jeff Saturday not fans like in the family. world, I am not in the world. You're I'm like a, a, you're like aggressively leaning in there. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm all on board for this. Hire. I saw okay. people, some people like trashing on the hire. They're like, they should have hired I mean, someone in the organization. Jeff Saturday is my guy. I love the man. Second favorite coach probably to, to Brian Dable right now, but. <laughs> I mean, he's just got great vibes. Yeah, so. Um, but you, you really think you're a bigger fan than like his family or? Hey, if there's one fan, it's him. It's, it's me. I, Clearly. I guess so. If um, the world's against Jeff Saturday, I'm against the world, bro. It's like... Jeff, Jeff Saturday is a, is a good vibes coach, so he's, he's coaching strictly off that right now, I think. Yeah. I, I th the once, if once the Colts start losing, though, or if they do, maybe they won't. Trouble. Maybe they won't. Maybe they found... I, we're not going to try to maybe, make these major assumptions after one game. Maybe Jim Irsay knows something that we don't. Maybe. Who do they play next week? They play uh, the, the oh they play the Eagles. Oh. That would be a statement. If the right? Colts wow. shut down the Eagles, that'd be legendary yeah. right there. If, ladies and gentlemen of the Cover Two audience, if the Colts beat the Eagles next Sunday, I think our guest Kieran may explode into a thousand different Kieran's and just it'll be. We can't have that. We can't have that. Get a Giants win um, too. Yeah. Be a good week. But be a good uh, week for the Raiders you, my are in a tough spot. <laughs> Might have to fire McDaniel's honestly. Uh, right Davis now. came out and basically said, "You got, you got this year. Don't worry about it. You got 2023 uh, secured," which I d completely disagree mm, with. Derek yeah. Carr's had enough crying at the postgame presser, and that the Raiders have lost <laughs> six times this year where they've had the ball to win the game on offense. That's where McDaniel should be shining the most, being the offensive coach to come from New England, and they have lost every single time. Yeah, that's bad. Yeah, and it was it was really funny to see Jeff Saturday tweet about how bad, the bad McDaniels is, <laughs> and then proceed to beat him. The Raiders and, look and horrible. That's, that's some king. Point. That's king worthy right there. That's yeah. King. That's it's impressive. It's impressive, but uh, yeah, the Raiders are bad. I I remember you know bef bef in the off season we talked about the McDaniels hiring and we didn't like it that much. Yeah, we were cautiously optimistic about that one. We we're like they got a lot of pieces, but. I, I wish I they had know. kept Rich Bisaccia, and honestly, they should have. <laughs> they probably should have. But um, Colts get the win. Good for Colts. They good got that, Colts, that, Ryan, that Ryan. They got his groove back. Jonathan Taylor. Finally won me a, back. Finally won me a fantasy game. I mean, good lord, the one number one overall. Imagine pick one. take him first overall. That's a. That's I did. A tough one. I did. That is a tough one. But tough um, one. Why don't we move on to out kicking our coverage now? Yeah, let's let's uh, out kick that. This is the segment you know we do. We try and do every week. Um, where do we want to start? Who, who's, who's got I some save, spicy? Let's save him for last. Let's save him. I feel like he's uh, got to cap us off. All right, I'll, we'll start with our negatives. Start with negatives. We gotta, Good we gotta call. Just, um, I'm not sure I'm all in on Brandon Staley as the Chargers head coach. I think there's a, I think the Chargers had so many expectations coming this year. And last year, all the expectations on Justin Herbert, he's 14 and 11 as head coach. And he had the playoff spot in his hands last year and for some reason decided to take a timeout. You see the conversation, they're both going for the tie, or at least the Raiders were. And I just think there's, some, there's certain games in the season where the Chargers are like, oh, this is a win they should definitely have. Last year it was Houston and a couple other teams, and they just fall apart and they lose them, and that game was end up costing them in the playoffs. I just don't think it's it. And I think it, with you have a franchise quarterback like Herbert, I think they need to go out and find somebody that really meshes with him well. Uh, kind of bring in a guy. I, I'm going to compliment you real quick. I'm bring a guy like Dayball that transformed Let's Josh go. Allen, guy with a lot of potential, but sometimes is a little sloppy. Yeah, that, yeah that's all you're going to get from me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, transformed I, in our QB. Yeah, yeah. I, I think if the Chargers miss, miss the playoffs again this year, he's out of there. Yeah. Um, so, I think it's probably you know that's probably an opinion that a lot of Chargers fans probably have at this point. Because um, yeah, I, I feel like. Justin Herbert's talent, which is probably top three in this league right now, um, is 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 being wasted. That. Really? Uh, I think top ten. I would definitely say at least top five. Oh yeah. Like we'll get there. Oh, okay. I mean, he made a certain throw against your Giants last year that I played. I was like unbelievable. 
he, unbelievable arm talent. Yeah, he, I, th- I think he is one of the most talented quarterbacks in this yeah. league. And I honestly don't know how much that's up for debate. But anyways. Um, Why don't you go ahead, Pat? Yeah, uh, we're going we're gonna to transition down to New Orleans real quick. Uh, the Aints, ain't oh, it. They're um, back. <laughs> they're potentially, I think, in a, they will be um, one of the worst teams for a few years to come now. Uh, their cap situation is Their horrible. cap situation, it is the worst in, in the NFL abysmal. for 2023. <laughs> they are, uh, for the 2023 season, they are projected to be negative 63 million um, that in, in cap space. <laughs> so they're going to have to do some cap magic there, which is what they've always done. But you have no quarterback. You, well, you have a healthy Jameis Winston that you paid in the offseason that you aren't playing right now. You're playing Andy Dalton instead. For some reason. Uh, you have no first-round pick next year. You traded that to the Eagles um, to get Trevor Penning and, and Chris Olave in this year's draft. Gross. Um, Trevor Penning's been out. Chris Olave's been good. but He's been good. But, you know, uh, you probably sh- objectively probably should have kept that considering you don't really have a solid quarterback option right now. Um they lost to the Steelers 20 to 10. They allowed the Steelers to do the seemingly impossible and have a good run game for once. <laughs> Kenny Harris Pickett and Jalen Warren and Kenny Pickett got a win. Uh, Steelers are probably one of if they're they're, they're probably a bottom. They're three, a bottom three team. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're a bottom. So team allowing them to win is is bad. They also have the currently they are the oldest team in the NFL. So mm. a lot of uh, bad contracts, a lot of older players that you're gonna have to phase out eventually. You know, no first-round draft pick. The Saints are going to be in a tough position, I think, for th- for a few years to come. You remember when I said I wasn't high on Dennis Allen? Yes. That's why. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's tough. I think a lot of it is also how they've managed their roster. Yeah. Um, it's it's more, it's not just him. I'm not going to yeah. completely throw him under the Cause, bus. Because Dennis Allen's been a good coach for years, a, mm-hmm. a good coordinator for years. But that's just my two cents. All right. Mr. Kirian, do you so have I'm, a negative take? I'm going to start with my <laughs> negative take here. <laughs> and this, I'll preface this. This might be a little bit out of pocket. And <laughs> I'm glad the New York Jets are doing well. As a Giants fan, I like it when New Jersey, New York football is doing good. Even though, like, the Jets aren't our rivals. I'm good with the Jets' success. And this is where my negative take comes in. <laughs> I can't stand... You know the videos that the Jets post on social media every week yes. after they win where it's like Johnny getting yep. ice cream? I cannot stand the Johnny ice cream videos. Johnny. We don't, and they didn't even play this week, so this makes it even more out of pocket. But the Johnny ice cream videos need to stop. Like, I want to root for the Jets. I don't want to say I'm scrolling through TikTok, Instagram Reels, whatever it is. I don't care if Johnny got ice cream. I'm sure he's a great kid. I don't want to see whether or not he got ice cream Why? this week. He just, Why? What's your reasoning? He just wants that I don't chocolate eat, ice cream. I, like, he, I hope he gets ice cream. I hope his dad buys him. I, I don't want to see it, though. And, like, Why? it's the same video every – we've seen it six times now. <laughs> I'm good. That's well, going to be uh, my negative take for the week. You're not, they're not going to get it this week because Zach Wilson and the Patriots is always a – very disastrous combination. Oh, I hope I'm okay with him getting. Let's make this clear. I <laughs> hope Johnny gets ice cream every week. I just don't want to see it on like my social media feed. You know, we're gonna someone like Why someone's not? gonna take it's that out of context and just says breaking cover two guest hates Johnny or something like no, that. I, I love Johnny. Johnny. I missed that the Instagram caption this week, but anyways, Johnny, um, poor Johnny. Yeah, I, I got nothing against. Let Johnny. the kid have his line. <laughs> let, let the kid have his ice cream. I Are you just it. jealous that you didn't have this kind of fame when you were a kid? I, <laughs> dude, I'm not going to lie. If I was doing that when the past couple years, if I was getting ice cream after every Giants win, there's not a lot of ice cream. Mm. This year we've got a little bit of a different well, story, though. they yeah. won Super Bowls when you were a kid. Yeah. That's true. I guess the, the 09 one was a little bit before me, but 2011, you're right. You were like seven. <laughs> Six. So I, I didn't, wa- I didn't like watch. Perfect, it. I watched. I watched. 20 literally, I didn't watch nine. literally Johnny's yeah. age. Literally Johnny's age. Johnny was. You were once Johnny, my friend. Yeah. You were once Johnny. Right. And well, I, did, I didn't post it on social media. Breaking social media news: Kieran it. hates Johnny. He <laughs> hates, I hates Johnny. He, I love you, Johnny. He hates fun, but um, <laughs> hates him. Can't stand him. Yeah. All right, All right Pat. Whatever. Um, <laughs> positivity time. Yeah, and then we're gonna we're gonna yell at Kieran for ten minutes. Um, I'm gonna say. We were going to use this, I was going to use this take a few weeks ago uh, when we had Darian, Mr. Darian Richardson on this podcast. Shout we, out. Shout out to him. He, he, 
speaking of, he called that LSU win. He's a prophet. Um, so good for him. But um, we didn't quite get to it. I think the Bears will win 10 plus games next year. I'm talking a lot about kind of the following season right yeah. now. But Justin Fields breaking all sorts of QB rushing records right now. He can't pass though. He, he can pass. He's, he's had some very good throws. Um, you know, he's still not perfect, but you, like, you, you love to see this kind of promise that he's showing that previously, you know, up like the first four or five games of the season, me included, a lot of people were out on him. I, I like Justin Fields. I, I, I like the take that you have, especially because you, you've listed all like the cap space and the high draft pick. So they're going to go out and be a, yeah. if they're aggressive and they make the right moves. Because we, in this draft previously, we were like, okay, it's time to get Justin Fields some help in that draft. And they didn't do diddly squat in that per, in that in that <laughs> yeah. department. And Justin Fields, a point that Kieran made, there's a couple plays here and there where he looks kind of unsettled in the pocket and he'll roll out when he doesn't need to. But I do like the progression from him. I think he, he's in the span of the month, that, like last month, he's gone from Boston Fields to like him <laughs> in the span of like three weeks. Oh, goodness. Yeah, um, yeah. like you mentioned, they're gonna have over 100 million in cap space for the following years. Um, they're gonna likely have a high draft pick. What? <laughs> Go on. <laughs> um, yeah, they're, they're they're in a good situation. I think management trusts him now, which they previously didn't because of, you know, they weren't willing to. They got him Bayless Jones and that was it uh, in the draft about. Um, but he is so fast. He is so physically fast, talented. Uh, even when the, you know, the, the fourth down sack that he took to when they lost the game, he broke two, three tackles. And the guy that finally sacked him, he almost broke that one as well. So yeah. I think they got a lot of promise, you know, a, I didn't, I didn't even realize this. They're on a three-game losing streak, but it just doesn't feel like that right they, now. They figured it out on offense it, to an extent. They, they, got, they got good vibes right now. But uh, watch out for the, the Bears next year. Games. Potentially one of, one of you know, worst to first. Because they'll probably finish last in this division. Maybe, maybe the Lions. We'll see. Between them and the Lions. But I think they'll win 10-plus games next year. Um, so my positive take, I'm going to be quick with this because I know this last one's going to take some time. Um, I think Christian Watson is going to potentially be Aaron Rodgers' new favorite weapon. And don't be surprised. Don't be ever shocked. Aaron Rodgers likes to do this. He likes to let us relax. And this is – I'm very low on Aaron Rodgers just because I don't really personally like him for my own reasons that I won't get into. But don't be surprised that the Packers are hunting in the playoffs in a couple weeks. We're talking about him as a potential seven or sixth seed being a little dangerous. As okay. a, you, never, you never can count out Rodgers for all the, all the flaws that New Green Bay has had this season. You never can count out 12. Yeah, I mean, they got it together this week. They got a big win over the Cowboys, uh, like we mentioned earlier. Um, Down by 14 twice with the way that offense has been moving too. It's yeah. Not, not, not all too uh, – it's pretty good to see. Not mm -hmm. if you're a Cowboys fan. Pretty yeah. great for you. Especially oh, yeah. Getting, getting the Cowboys 14 lost. point blown lead. I want to say – I, I think I saw something that that was the first time they'd ever lost a game after being out. Was well, it like 164 and one or something? Yeah, probably some something like that in the fourth quarter. But it's like that Super Bowl stat. No one's ever trailed X Y Z amount of points and lost, and then the Falcons did. Yeah, but they've invested a lot into this defense, so mm -hmm. if, you know maybe that continues to improve. They cut Amari Rogers today. You know, tough for Amari Rogers. Yeah, that, that fumbled punt wasn't helping uh, anybody. He's he's done a lot of those, unfortunately. But um, yeah, Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, two young wide receivers. As they continue to gain chemistry with Aaron Rodgers, potentially it improves. So now they could fall flat next week, for all we know. They very, they very well could. But it's all about sustaining it. Um, yeah, Kieran, um, it's time. I've so I've got a bit of a question for you. Oh, is dear. it just me, or is it a little a little cold in the studio today? No, not really. No, it's cold outside. It's though. it's I'm, about I'm four, honestly kind of sweating. Forty five yeah. degrees here. It's a little cold it's in the cold. studio, so I'm gonna I'm gonna layer up a bit. So I brought a little get get a look for the camera. I'm gonna get some layers like on here just large. to stay warm. Yeah. You're really gonna cover up the big ball grand sweatshirt? Ladies and With gentlemen, that. you may recall earlier in the year, the most viewed cover two episode of all time. I said that, wait, am I covering my mic? No, I, th there I you think you're good. good. In the most viewed cover two episode of all time, I said that Daniel Jones would be a top 10 quarterback. And now we're going back to that take. He is now currently a top 10 quarterback. In this past weekend, Saquon Barkley, 35 carries this game. This is the most he's had 
uh, in an NFL game, second most in any yep. game when you count NCAA. But even then, Daniel Jones was technically more efficient than Saquon. They, so they put the ball in his hands like like 17 times. It was it was the most frustrating Giants win I've seen in a while because they were like chewing clock like halfway through the third quarter. That's that's what they kind of got to do though because their offense is not. No, they can great. trust in. This is what I'm saying. Daniel Jones can air it out. He's that guy. He had this is the highest. Passer, it was your passer rating a QBR, the highest single game by any QB this season, and that goes to Daniel Jones. Now, in the NFL, there's two QBs right now who have interceptions on less than 1% of their passes this season. The first is Tom Brady, uh, interceptions on 0.4% of his pass plays, okay. and Tom Brady's Tom Brady. The second, Danny Dimes, 0.6% of his plays are interceptions. That is the second best in the NFL. The narrative that Daniel Jones is a turnover-prone QB is it's, it's, it's a dead narrative. Did it's you know that Tom Brady has nearly 200 more attempts than uh, Daniel Jones? Th that has to do with the system. The Giants need to start trusting Daniel Jones. Here, since 2020, uh, I'm going to go Josh Allen have, here. have you thought about the reason they're winning games is because they're not trusting Yeah, they've Daniel been, they've Jones. been efficient. So why, they've why, managed why, managed why do the game his well? rate stats look like, so good then? Like, like, statistically, if you throw more passes – you're going to throw more interceptions, most likely. Sure, uh, but like, the rate he's throwing interceptions. Here, let me just bring up this stat. Since 2020, Josh Allen, top two QB in the NFL, pretty undisputed, has 35 interceptions. Since 2020, Daniel Jones, Danny Dimes, has 19 interceptions. Significantly didn't better. Did Daniel Jones miss like a whole season? No, he, he, it was like four games with like a neck structural injury. But I've got. I think my new... How many fumbles, though? That's year? true. Only yeah. two. Well, no, no, no. I'm just saying, I, like, overall. He doesn't, he doesn't fumble it anymore. That's an well, old take. Well, well, That's yeah, an old take. Like, Here. Yeah, you're talking about since 2020. How many fumbles has Daniel Jones had since 2020? We'll, we'll get back to that. But if I need to summarize the new, new and improved, updated Daniel Jones take in one sentence, he's no longer a future top 10 QB. He's a current top 10 QB with top five upside. That's not true. That is the ceiling there. That's and I'll, I'll even give you, I'll give you my top 10 now. I've okay. got Allen and Mahomes one and two. You can go whatever order you want. I've got Lamar at the three. I've got your your guy Joe Burrow in the four, Joe Shiesty. I've got in the five spot, I'm high on this man, Tua turned the ball over. We've got, we've got Justin Herbert at six, Jalen Hurts at seven, Gino at eight, Kirk at nine. And then I've got Danny Dimes at 10 right now, just above Dak Prescott at 11. No. Where in the world so, are Brady or Aaron yeah, Rodgers? Where, where's Brady, <laughs> Brady and Rodgers? Right now, right now, if I had to, if I'm tied to the train tracks, the rest of the team is neutral. I'm tied to the train tracks, <sighs> and the only way to stop the train is to win an NFL game. The rest of my team you're is not, neutral. You're not trusting Tom Brady. I get to choose. Tom. Brady's not in this. Brady's not in this. Brady's, you or can Rod debate that, well, sure. You just, you just said <laughs> Daniel Jones is a better quarterback than Brady. I'm asking you. Right now, yeah, Brady's old. I want, I want Jones now. But if Brady's I, been old, you, but he's yeah, but you're talking old. about if you need to win a game, <laughs> then okay, then I'll take Jones over Kirk. That's close though. They're probably about the same. I'm talking about Tom Brady. Patrick, I'm talking about issue. Tom Brady. <laughs> if I'm Tom I'll, Brady, I'll get to Aaron Brady in a second. Aaron Rodgers, not Aaron. No, chaos, if I'm tied to chain tracks chaos. and I get to choose between Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, Kyler Murray, or Daniel Jones to stop that train and save my life. Six days a weekend, twice on Sunday. I am taking Daniel Jones no, over Aaron Rodgers. Five game-winning drives leads the NFL this season. I'll take. I'll take. Kirk Cousins has the same amount of game-winning yeah, drives. Kirk this Cousins season. is also a great QB. Dude. Oh my goodness. So you. So. So answer my question. Yes or no? Is Daniel Jones better than Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady? He's better than Rodgers. No. <laughs> the back-to-back -back MVP. The back-to-back -back MVP. Year, this year, Daniel Jones beat Aaron Rodgers in London with a bloody hand. No, the Giants beat the Packers. <laughs> Daniel Jones had a great game that week. Didn't Saquon Barkley run like so many things out of the Wildcat that week as well? No, they, they did a little bit, but they always get the illegal formation on that. Right now, he's a top 10 QB. Right, I feel like even you would have to admit top 12. Top 12. Patrick, oh, okay. I know this hurts okay. Can you yeah. say top 12? Yeah, may maybe. I maybe. got 10 quarterbacks or 11 quarterbacks right here with better rating than Daniel Jones. G I give me two Bs and I'll say better or worse. Mahomes. Look. Uh, better. That Daniel Jones is better than Mahomes? No, no. Mahomes is better. Okay. okay. I'm so asking better. if Daniel Jones is better Just than Mahomes. Just go down the list. Mahomes, you already said it. Jalen Hurts. Uh, he's better. Josh Allen. Better. Joe Burrow. Better. Aaron Rodgers. 
Worse. No. Oh, Rodgers has oh. Rodgers has better you're weapons. You just you just no, raved what? about what? that. You just what? raved what? about what? that. Aaron Rodgers two rookie wide receivers. Whoa, 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 whoa. And David Sills is our wide receiver one. Yeah. Yeah. But Christian Watson and we've got Romeo. Walmart employees at risk. I could go clear Chris, receiver. Christian Watson has like up until this game. He's had like he, he career has not drops. been good. He had not been good. Okay, but they got Romeo Rogers, Dubs. They just they just cut, they just cut. Sammy Sammy Watkins, you know, great Clemson player and great in the league for a long time, but has not been great this year. He's been injured as well. Oh lord. Like like I you could potentially Saquon Saquon I would put above Aaron Jones. I would say so that, like I, potentially the, like y'all are pretty even there. Anyways, I would say going. a fair comparison is probably Jimmy G, a guy that like fits yeah. well no. in the system yes. and wins games. Because yes. this is yes. Garoppolo has like a great career record. And a lot of people argue that is because of the system the 49ers yes. have. There's yes. the NFL drafts coming up. You're an NFL GM. I'm taking. No, no. Let me I'm finish. taking a quarterback. There, there's a there's a potential a quarterback. Yes. And he has the size. So like we're talking height and weight of Josh Allen, the speed of Lamar Jackson, and the arm of Kirk Cousins. That would be the greatest NFL draft prospect. Well, did you just say the, the greatest NFL draft prospect of our of all time? Has Everyone would take that QB six Cousins. overall. Everyone has, takes that QB has, first round. No, no. <laughs> Kirk Cousins' arm with Lamar speed and Josh Allen no. size. That's what Daniel Jones. Did. That's no. his ceiling. He's faster than Lamar based on like miles per hour top speed since. Oh, but he's not a better <laughs> no. runner. He may be faster. <laughs> but Kieran, guess what? This isn't track and field. This, playing this, is, this is NFL. Sure. This is football. Daniel Jones could throw the ball eight times like Garoppolo did in the NFC Championship, and the Giants could probably still win a game. Like, it's, like, it's just like that. You, is Kyler Murray better than Daniel Jones? No. He has better arm talent and is a better runner. Uh, he's, he's a better runner. Jones has better arm talent. Mm. Jones is more accurate. Mm. You can hate on Jones. Jones is a very mm. accurate passer. Mm. I'd take Jones over Kyler now. No. 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 <laughs> that should Absolutely. be the Instagram caption. No. No. <laughs> Who's better, Daniel Jones or Trevor Lawrence? Daniel Jones. So you would rather have Daniel Jones than Trevor Lawrence? Yeah. Okay. If I'm building a team, yeah, 100%. Mm, okay. Trevor Lawrence is having a better uh, season. Gino's better right now. Gino's good. Okay. Um, well, that's interesting. I don't even know where to go at this point. <laughs> you just, like, put um, Patrick into, like, just the shock state. Uh, I mean, this is this has happened both times we've been on here. Yeah. Like, just... Can I can I hear where you'd realistically put him? Because I think it pains you to admit, but I think you've got him at, like, 11. Okay. Like, if you deep so, down search into your heart... Mahomes. One. Mahomes, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow, Aaron Rodgers... Um, Rodgers over Jones yes, is a little crazy yes. these days. No, stop. Stop talking. <laughs> Dallas, uh, Dallas. Dak Prescott. Uh, Dak Prescott. Kyler Murray. Uh, did I say Jalen Hurts already? You have not. Jalen Hurts. You got to put Tom Brady in there somewhere. Tom Brady. Tua Tungabailoa. Yeah. Uh, Kirk Cousins. Um, did I say Kyler? I did say Kyler Murray. You did. Um, I'd even be inclined to put Trevor on, Lawrence on, on season. Not on Cobb Double XP week. Not on Cobb Double XP Yeah, but I'd, I'd probably still take... Kyler, I'd take Gino. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, maybe he's 14, 15 right I, I think that's fair. Yeah, I, I don't think there's a few of those guys that are questionable. I take Trevor Lawrence too over. Yeah, I would. Yeah, probably that's take your Clemson. Trevor that's your Clemson no. homer pick. I, no. I go to Clemson too, so no. I'm. It's, it's no. a homer pick. Okay. Well, um, we'll we'll we'll, we'll, we'll you drop decide. A, we'll drop an yeah, we'll drop an Instagram poll or something. So we'll we'll see what the fans. <laughs> Um, you know, since we're we're getting over 200 views, well, that's the episode, power of the right, people, right, Kieran? Easy. Um, but we'll 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 drop something, and you know, we'll interact with the fans a little bit. Uh, Love yeah. our fans, uh, not yes. our fans. It's not um, our show. But <laughs> um, we're gonna we're gonna wrap we're it gonna up. Wrap Patrick's it up there. Um, Patrick's having a thanks, tough time. Thanks, Kieran, for, for okay, coming man. on. Um, but uh. As always, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to Tiger Vision and check out our other great shows. And thank you to our producer, Zach, for having to listen to this yeah. shouting Let's go, match. Zach. Yep. If you yep. guys want to see Kieran yet again, maybe at the end of the season, if the Giants are a playoff contender, maybe we'll bring him on. And maybe when we're in the Super Bowl. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe if they're in the playoffs, we'll scream at him once again. But guys, thank you as always. This is Grayson Mann and Patrick Neal and our special guest, Kieran, Kieran signing Devon. off. Thank you guys as always and take care. Yep, have a good one.